all right let me read the book oh it's it's not a book it's um it's a it's an article from the glasgow thesis service from dong yun kim the title would be reason tradition and authority a comparative study of habermas and gadamer page 79 Page, uh, chapter 5, Gadamer and Habermas on Tradition, page 94. In the pre preceding two chapters, I explored the essential of Gadamer philosophical hermeneutics and Habermas communication action theory. In chapter 3, I dealt with Gadamer philosophical hermeneutics in relation to its key features, prejudice, tradition, and the fusion of horizons. Gadamer contends not only that a historical, historically affected consciousness of temporality requires awareness of tradition, but that tradition simultaneously rests on, but permits a critics of prejudices. In this chapter, I will expound upon Gadamer's concept of tradition in more detail in relation to Habermas' critic of it. In doing so, I will explore the validity and the possible application of Gadamer's understanding of tradition in connection to the concept of filial piety. See section 5.2 and 5.3 below. As I will argue, ontological understanding of human existence, which is the basis of Gadamer philosophy, raises the problem of is and out. What is and what ought to be. Tradition can be tradition can have normative force simply by virtue of being accepted. However, once tradition is challenged, a problem of normativity of is and out arises. This becomes evident once we put into question the practice of filial piety. For Gadamer, tradition determines the limits of human existence, of the same. But for Habermas, the dogmatic force of tradition and authority must be dissolved through another force the force of a better argument. 5.1 Gadamer on authority as acknowledgement As I have argued, the concept of prejudice, tradition, and the fusion of horizons are central to Gadamer hermeneutics. In his book Truth and Method, these notions are introduced under the title of the historicity of understanding as a principle of hermeneutics. Billen, 2001, page 9. For Gadamer, such notions carry a range of negative implications and suggestions. Billen, 2001, page 9. As the book t titles implies, the primary goal is to show that the scientific methods cannot extend its range to the spare of human sciences or Gaysen Wissenschaften, and that the scientific method cannot be identical to the search of truth. He maintains that truth can be experienced in the areas of art, literature, and philosophy. These are all modes of experience in which a truth is communicated that cannot be verified by methodological means proper to science. Gadamer, Truth and Methods, 1989, page XXIII, triple III. It's the preface. It's the preface of the book. 
Gadamer seeks to defend the human sciences, which lies beyond the practices of the scientific methods and rehabilitate other modes of knowledge and truth which are premised on human experience. As we saw in Chapter 3, Gadamer condemns the Enlightenment distinction between reason and prejudice. He also accused the Enlightenment project of a false dichotomy between freedom and authority. Holub 1991, page 60. By contrast, he argues that authority for the most part rests on superior insight and judgment, not on the subjection and ab abdication of reason, but on the knowledge that the other is superior to oneself in judgment and insight that and that for this reason his judgments take precedence in example it has priority over one's own gadamer truth and method 1999 page 279 the key distinction between authority defined as the, demand, as the demand for blind obedience and authority as the recognition of superior insight is that the latter, which means the recognition of super, superior insight, requires an act of recognition on the part of those subject to such authority. Authority, Gadamer maintains, must be earned. This is the essence of the authority claimed by teacher, the superior, and the expert. Gadamer, 1989, which means Truth and Methods, page 279 and 280. Gadamer considered that the children's, that the ch teacher authorities is appreciated by students who acknowledge his or her superior knowledge. In this sense, for Gadamer, it is not an example of blind obedience, but is dependent on recognition of superior knowledge. For Gadamer, this kind of authority presupposes an overact of judgment, and which true authority is recognized. Moreover, Gadamer declares that granted authority exists in countless forms. As I see it, there are compelling reasons for viewing acknowledgement as the determining factor of true authority relationship. Gadamer Truth and Methods, 1989, page 285. He wants to demonstrate that the concept of authority could operate as a non-dogmatic force by showing that there are cases of authority which are widely accepted as legitimate. Lund, 2006, page 37. In dealing with the notion of authority and tradition, Gadamer poses a question which can be taken as a challenge to Habermas' idea of critical reflection and emancipatory reflection. Whether reflections always dissolve substance, substantial relationship or is capable of taking them up into consciousness. Gadamer, 1979, page 34. For Gadamer, there is a positive phase of authority that is dependent upon recognition, involving reflective approval of another person's superior judgment. However, for Habermas, the concept of, the, of authority is by definition dogmatic. Habermas, 1977, page 357. Authority has connotation of something oppressive, frequently demanding le legitimation through ideological means that provide the illusion of the manifestation of freedom. He argues, without proviso on principle of universal and dominance free agreement, therefore it is impossible to differentiate in a fundamental way between dogmatic acknowledgement and true consensus. 
Reason as the principle of rational discourses is the rock on which existing authorities split, not the one on which they are founded. Habermas, 1986b, page 316. What is at issue between Gadamer and Habermas is whether authority is by definition dogmatic and a threat to freedom, or whether reason in fact requires recourse to authority and prejudice. Holub 1991, page 68 and 69. Gadamer explicitly refers to the acknowledgement of true authority in contrast to dogmatic authority. True authority in contrast to dogmatic authority. A non-dogmatic true authority rests precisely on the part of those subject to such authority. The Gadamerian notion of reflective acknowledgement then takes place only in a certain particular cases under particular circumstances. Yet, as Robert Paul Wolf notes, there are of course many reasons why men actually acknowledge claims to authority. The most common, taking the whole human history, is simply the prescriptive force of tradition. The fact that something has always been done in a certain way strikes most men as perfectly adequate reason for doing it that way again. Why should we submit to a king? Before we have always submitted to kings. But why should we but why should the oldest of the king become king in turn? Because all the sons have always been heirs to the throne. The force, of the, tra- tra- the force of the traditional is engraved so deeply on man's mind that even a study of the violent and haphazard origins of a ruling family will not weaken its authority in the eyes of its subject. Wolf 1999, page 65. As Wolf argue, it is because the prescriptive force of tradition that Habermas is suspicious of Gadamer's notion of the authority of tradition, which preserve as an unreflective perpetuation of the status, status quo. For Gadamer, another's authority takes the place of one's own reflective judgment.